Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Foundry Live. Today's session will be about story development and creative collaboration with Flick 6.5. My name is Elise, and I am part of Foundry's industry marketing team. Today, it's my pleasure to be your virtual host and to introduce my colleagues. Today, I have with me our creative specialist, DJ Matias. We also have Maria Grazia Petito de Leo, known as MG, who is the Flix product manager, and Katerina Malfi, also known as Katie, who is our Flix product specialist. Today, we'll get started with DJ, who will give an overview of Flix 6.5, and MG and Katie will be here to moderate the Q&A at the end of the session and to answer any of your Flix related questions. We're all very excited to be joined today by PH Daler and Benoit Thirio, directors of the animated short film Canary from Rodeo FX. Today, they'll be talking about their story development process, give us an exclusive look at the development of a sequ sequence from the film, and discuss how they used flicks. Before passing it over to them, I'd just like to mention that this event is part of our Foundry Live series, and we have a couple more events coming up this month. Here's a look at the schedule, and if you're interested in joining any of the events, we'll share a link to our events page in the chat for you to sign up. And finally, I would just like to say thank you to Intel, Dell, and NVIDIA for powering Foundry Live and continuing to be technology partners with Foundry, and we appreciate their continued support. And so with that, I'll pass it on to DJ. The next portion of the presentation has been pre-recorded for streaming quality purposes, but we will be here with you in the chat. So feel free to say hello and ask any questions you may have. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining in on this episode of Foundry Live. My name is DJ Matias, and I'm a creative specialist here at Foundry. My role as a creative specialist gives me access to the entire product line from Foundry so that I can share with you the latest and greatest product features, tips, training, or workflows through one-on-one -on -one demos, group demos, and events like this one. If you are here to learn more about Flix, then you are in the right place at the right time. Flix is an application that is intended to be used in the pre-production process. But if you find another use for it in your pipeline, then please be sure to let us know how you're using it. Previous versions of Flix have built a foundation that enables Storeboard Pro and Photoshop users to integrate with Flix and production to easily manage multiple iterations of boards and sequence revisions. With the latest release, we've focused on developing even more features for admins, artists, production, and editorial. Admins have more control than ever before to manage show permissions on a granular level. They can automate Flix data and files and create custom contact sheets. The new versioning and tracking of imported panels workflow allows artists to break free from the constraints of Photoshop or Storyboard Pro and use whatever sketching tool they love to use most. Production teams will love the new customizable contact sheets, panel browser search functionality, media relinking of imported panels, and the manageability of SVPZ files on the Flix server. And finally, Avid editors can now appreciate that any panels used from a sequence to create new reference panels on the timeline, Flix will now retain the related panel information so artists can rebuild the panel without having to guess which panels editorial used. As an added bonus, not only has the Flix API documentation been fully revamped to be more descriptive and informative with examples of how to use the code, but webhooks have also been conveniently added to trigger events that automate standard processes and actions. With so many new features and so little time to show them, my colleague Tim will walk us through a quick look at what we'll find in Flix 6.5. Take it away, Tim. Flix 6.5 brings new, fully customizable features and improved automation, giving artists the freedom to choose how they tell their stories and share them securely. This release brings a new system to manage group and user permissions. Before 6.5, users were either admins or non-admins, but the new permission system allows for much more granular control over who can access which shows based on assigned groups and roles. Use the new management console to view and manage users, groups, assigned roles, and levels of access. 
we've introduced a brand new contact sheet feature that allows you to create and edit your own templates. So now the panel layout and the information on contact sheets can be tailored for each show. In the management console, the templates tab gives you a list of preset contact sheet templates with a preview of how each template displays panels and metadata. You can also create your own custom contact sheet template, tailoring everything your show's contact sheets should display, such as the number of panels and their layout, as well as reviewer comments, branding, and more. In Flix 6.5, sequences no longer require panels to originate from the same sketching app in order to use Flix's versioning and asset management. A new relinking system allows panels to originate from anywhere, and Flix will recognize them when importing from Storyboard Pro. Flix uses its own metadata sent to Storyboard Pro to assess which panels need to relink, which ones need to version up, and which ones are completely new. In this release, artists can now manually import panels from any software and gain the benefit of Flix's versioning system. If you have a new version of a panel that you've manually imported, click and hold on the Import button and select Import Panel Revisions. Flix now versions up that panel instead of creating a new panel ID. In Flix 6.5, you can now save Storyboard Pro source files on the Flix server. This allows you to easily retrieve a project and all its assets from one central location, regardless of who's been working on it. Now, artists don't have to think about where files are stored or what they're named if they just want to do a quick update to a panel. Artists now have easy access to all the panels used in editorial to compose a ref panel. So recreating a composition is so much easier. Click on the panel ID for a ref panel and all the related panels used in its creation are displayed in the related section. From here, you can access the original layered artwork directly. You can now search for a specific panel using the search bar at the top of the panel browser. Enter the panel ID, press enter, and Flix finds and selects the panel with that ID. Thanks again, Tim, for showing us those great features. Those are certainly a lot of new features that have come into Flix 6.5, but where do they all come from? A lot of what goes into the development of Flix comes from our customers. We meet with them, listen to their feedback about what works for them, what doesn't work for them, and what they'd like to see in Flix. To learn about Flix at your own pace, please visit learn.foundry.com forward slash Flix or scan the QR code on your screen. There you'll find documentation and tutorials for story, production, and editorial. If the latest version of Flix has sparked your interest and you'd like to try it out, then please email sales at foundry.com to get started on your free trial. Thank you so much for your attention and consideration. I hope that if you trial Flix, then we'll get a chance to meet again. Until then. Cool, we're all here. Hi, everyone. Thank you, DJ, first of all, for the uh, demo. And Ben and PH, welcome back to Foundry Life. Happy to have you here again. Um, for yeah. those who missed the first event in the fall, uh, Ben and PH are a creative duo from Broad Effects. They've been directing together for over 12 years, and all their work, both short films and commission work, have been featured many times at many international events, um, like the Annecy Film Festival, and their talent has been internationally recognized with an honorable mention at the Queen Palm Film Festival, and also um, they got um, the Cree Award for MSS Smoke. And now, as you're traveling the world with Canary, right? Um, Canary was premiered last October at TIFF, and since then has collected selections and wins all over the world in France, Canada, Taiwan, Italy, and South Korea. And that's what you're gonna talk to us about today, Canary. So 
We're really looking forward to see all this behind the scenes that now you can finally show us. And I'd say just crack on. Let's start with a trailer and then let's hear all about how you used it and how you built it. All right, everybody, so we're going to just dive right in. Um, so I've got Flix open over here. And just a little something about Flix. This was uh, something completely new that I had the chance to be introduced to, uh, thanks to Ben, uh, when he came into uh, Rodeo, you know, uh, to uh, direct Canary with me. Uh, he'd already been head of story at another company where he had a chance to, to play with Flix and, and work with it. And uh, he was very convincing in um, sort of letting us know about the strengths and the uh, capabilities of it. And at the very simplest level, I guess, right, Ben, it's just like already just being able to reshuffle, you know, storyboard drawings uh, without having to rename everything or, or you know, or repin them all on a board is a huge advantage and that's just like the lowest level advantage that, that we're given here, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> so we had uh, yeah, a great time just um, with this tool. I was so impressed at how it allowed us to collaborate and iterate quickly and in a non-destructive way. It was always just like we were never worried to test out stuff because we weren't losing anything. It was always possible to revert to a previous version. So I'm gonna open, um, I guess, right? I think we were saying, yeah, yeah version number right. four, right? Which yeah, is? Just, just before we open it, yeah. just let, let us uh, talk a little bit of what was done prior to the steps. Yeah. Um, so there was this sequence that we imagined together and um, since we were at the early stage of writing and we were actually writing our story on storyboards, we wanted to test out our ideas. You remember PH, yeah. right? Yeah. So what Flix uh, what, uh, is giving um, the artist is, uh, you know, the template. And there's a template that it's called a thumbnail template. Uh, which we use to uh, generate the first pass of our story. So what we so uh, what we would do is that we would like open that template within Photoshop and start drawing these panels next to each other within that uh, specific template. Yeah, and uh, we. Uh, drawn pages and pages within that uh, template right here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy that worked. I, <laughs> I wasn't set. I didn't set it up. <laughs> so that's how easy it is to to just yeah. You get to draw. You know, your nine nine thumbs yeah. at a time, and then Flix is kind enough to like snapshot each of them and make them individual panels in the program. Yeah. Uh, so there. And and that was really cool for me because you know as as I said we were writing as we were drawing, yeah. and this is the approach we took on uh, on th this short film, and. Uh, you can see the panel on the uh, right, and uh, then there's an automatic uh, function that you can send your your panels into Flakes, which Flakes will cut each thumbnail pack, uh, panel into single panel, which uh, is the result. And if you go pH now yeah. in our first um, uh, yeah. Jumping yeah. in. Our first version, 
you see uh, those were actually nine drawings per page that became one drawings per page. Yep. Yeah, I remember very well. So we've got this sequence where, uh, yeah, Sonny, the little boy down in the mine is taking care of the bird, uh, the yeah. canary. And, and this sequence, like it changed a lot. It's not, it's, it's not, there's a lot of it that's like this in the movie, but not all of it. Like this, this moment we don't yeah. have anymore. There's a, there's a lot of yeah. changes. Maybe, maybe we should pitch it, right? Let's go, let's go up top and, and just pitch it. All right. Okay, please. So here, just to put everybody in context, the bird's been exposed to some smoke down there. So Sonny's worried about him. This is why he's reaching out. And he's carrying and he takes him out of the cage to give him some water and take care of him, right? And he blows off uh, the coal smoke, the coal dust that's on the bird. And then they have a, you know, a little moment. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, this is one of my rough little uh, sketches. It's fun. This, this is it. You know, like we got to work on this together. Like, you know, Ben did a first pass and then I was like, oh, I'd love to try out this moment. So, yeah, so I just put in a panel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so they're having fun together. Sonny pulls out a sunflower seed and the bird is used as their little routine together and the bird hops onto his perch and, and he essentially imitates. Sonny gives him a cue, bouncing the little seed up and down and the bird bounces up and down. Uh, Sonny twirls the seed up in the air and the bird jumps and twirls itself, you know? There's a tit for tat going on and then Sonny drops the sunflower seed and the bird drops on his back. And this is where we introduce, you know, the idea of sort of oh, playing dead <laughs> and what this can mean in a mine where a canary is supposed to uh, be the, the gauge of whether, you know, things are getting dangerous or not, whether there's any dangerous invisible uh, gas. <laughs> Obviously he's playing. So <laughs> Sonny catches on, oh, this is, uh, we can have some fun with this. <laughs> As he just does the gesture and the bird um, uh, plops down and Sonny laughs. And then they are interrupted by a dynamite explosion and it's back to work. So he grabs the cage, he grabs the bird and he runs off. And that's, uh, if I remember well, the end of our sequence as smoke envelops them. Yeah. So I go, yeah, yeah, a pretty big. Yeah, that's nice to to revisit that. It seems like uh, it's been a long time ago. It has, it has, yeah. and and we've got to jump in pretty quick, Ben, because uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we're down to thirteen uh, minutes to 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 go over this. So um, yeah, and so guys, you know, um, Kayo Martin was uh, the story artist that collaborated and did the storyboard on this piece. And based on these thumbnails that we would uh, send him, he would actually continue the work with Inflict. So if you can jump straight up, like Kayo doesn't uh, avoid either doing a pass of his own thumbnail because he wants to, uh, uh, suggest new things within within the scene and probably play play with cameras. You'll see a uh, bit of a is yeah yeah. This is seventy three. Like you'll see a bit of a mix okay. here where uh, we've we've got some final panels from from Kayo, but we've also got a few of his thumbnails yeah. left where he's sort of yeah. pitching to us. Like he's you know he'll be like, well, I like what you guys are, are telling me, but. Could could we maybe try this out or yeah. tell it this way? And of course, we and always what, work very. What open. is really cool, like PH just said, this is version seventy three. So there were seventy three iterations before we got to this, and it goes quickly. So Indeed. yeah, PH, can you pitch uh, Kayo's board? Yeah. Okay. So as you see, uh, in this version, we're getting a bit more detail. We have Sunny looking behind him. You know, is anybody watching me as I take the bird out of the cage? Because this is a big deal. He's not supposed to take the bird out of the cage, essentially. Um, but he does. He does. And uh, we introduce here the beam of light where the bird is sort of yearning to, to, to get out there. And so is, uh, so is the boy. 
Um, same idea as before, we've got the, you know, giving the bird water. And we've got this nice camera move now <laughs> with, uh, you know, depth of field and Sunny sort of rubbing some of the cold dust off the bird before blowing it off. And a nice little comedy beat here that's been added is poof, this little uh, crest of feathers popping up. And this is what uh, triggers uh, Sonny to laugh a little bit. And as he's about to put the bird back in, the bird chirps, interrupting Sonny, who looks up and uh, we get to see um, the little hole at the top of the cave, you know. Yeah, which uh, later got uh, shuffled and changed, yeah. but that was quite a good version there. Yes, indeed. Sonny puts the bird back in the cage and time to, as you see, there's a lot more panels now. <laughs> We've got all the movements sort of defined out. Uh, Sonny pulls out the sunflower seed and plays with it. And the bird imitates and the twirl. Super nice. Dropping the seed, bird plopping down. and repeating the trick, the new trick. This beautiful artwork by Kayo. And the explosion, and he runs off for the smoke, all right. And I think one little thing that we had in here, Ben, right, is uh, just an example of a, a tiny correction we ask for uh, here. Just a few lines dropped in, and this is great. Just a little drawing tool instead of, you know, pulling into Photoshop, we can do it, you know, directly in Flix. This type of um, a drawing, we can throw it into Photoshop, do that, and then throw it back into Flix. It's super simple. And uh, and here was just like let's let's not lose sight of the bird. So open handed as he carries it, we don't want to feel like he's stifling or, you know, hiding the bird from the camera. So little note, and we'll j quickly jump in to version 74 just to show uh, how that was addressed by Kayo. Uh, essentially, here we go, you know, so he did the whole picking up the bird with the, uh, you know, open hand. Just awesome, so we don't lose contact with the character. So, nice. Uh, yep. That was some masterful work by Kayo, by the way. Uh, we were really pleased uh, to see these boards. Uh, obviously, they went through uh, various edit with our editor, Guillaume, who uh, um, I think you, some of you guys have met because I, I did um, a uh, small presentation with Guillaume earlier last uh, last year, yeah, yeah. sometime last year. So um, uh, then this scene got edited and uh, put into the reel, and uh, some different uh, decisions w were taken. Some uh, editorial uh, notes were given, and some. Uh, yeah, we we got feedback, and for time constraints, we had to, you know, uh, leave a few ideas behind and change it and everything. So yeah, this one of the moments that we uh, that we had to, to to take out, and I'm not sure it's I'm not even sure if it's out in the next version. Well, we'll see in a second because it may only, have, yeah. I think it only fell at animation later. Yeah, let's go, let's go ahead and uh, see, see, see what we, we've done. Yeah, what I wanted to mention also is that uh, the, the other great thing with the timing in Flix is that's another place where amazingly we could do some back and forth with Guillaume where we could suggest some preliminary timings and then he could modify those, you know? We could time out drawings directly in Flix and then he would get that within his edit. He could change his edit timings and re-export to Flix and we would see what he's done, you know? Um, so let's see, let's go through this version here, which is the final boarded version of it with 
Guillaume yeah. and everybody and Caio having uh, put in what they needed to put in. So Sonny's putting the cage down and he, um, so he takes out the bird. Got our first little intro of the ray of light. Uh, so Sonny feeling sorry for the bird, gives it some water. We have it now as a sort of jump cut. Um, yeah, we still got the camera move. Sunny wiping the dust off and blowing the coal off. And a little gag. All good. Interrupted by the ray of light. And then putting him back in. Gets his idea. And now, ah, uh, this is a change, right? Now he's, uh, <laughs> uh, for clarity's sake, now he's pulling out a dried sunflower to pull out the sunflower seed. And those who see the movie will understand why. Um, so great um, uh, point to add. Uh, so now we go into the playful trick. Notation. Still got the twirl, everything. It's like in the final. Chopping the seed, playing dead. <laughs> and there we go. And the explosions happen. Yeah. Nice little moment, see here in this one. Uh, yeah, I love the, the little look of worry, which we, 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 we kept in animation. Uh, and he runs off through, see now he's running out of, you know, we defined that he's in this little sort of section, Sonny's Corner, we called it. And there's this board of wood sort of blocking it off partially from the rest of the mine. So he's, he was hidden away and he comes out. So that's, uh, yeah, great little extra detail and then he dives down and now he's not getting covered by the smoke anymore he's just below it because the whole point has become he wants to keep the bird away from the smoke he doesn't want him to be exposed again yeah so he'll go down as the smoke is pushing him down so he'll crawl and look up to see uh a way to escape this situation and and uh, uh, see uh, 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 probably a solution with the elevator. Is it is it uh, is the elevator in this? Uh, no, this is where this one uh, ends ends. You know, uh, so that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, I mean, everybody, you, you see how how this sequence sort of evolved through the thumbnails, and it just felt very natural yeah, and organic, so right? Go back to the thumbnail. Just just show the comparisons from like us uh, getting. I think we did a hundred and seventy version. Yeah, it's uh, from, seventy from the, those Two initial versions. drawings. Yeah there with our ideas and her writing uh, you see that some ideas uh you know remain other changed uh but uh, that's what's cool about flicks is that we never lost any of these iterations we can go back and just show you every one of them yeah uh, we could do you know 20 of these <laughs> yeah, little, little presentations. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, quite happy to to see uh, to see those now that uh, the project you know is finished and has played in theater and uh, as uh, you know uh, is still in festivals right right now. So yeah. Yeah, going to some exciting yeah. places uh, at the beginning of this year. We can't wait. Going to Greece, going to Japan, going to uh, Brussels. Uh, yeah, so New York and New York. Yes, and we just heard about that. So it's 
sighting here uh, and for Ganari still. So yeah, we hope you guys uh, enjoyed our little uh, demo here. And uh, these are very exclusive boards. We've never shown these before. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Caio uh, for uh, this huge co collaboration on the project. And thanks to Guillaume, who has well contributed a lot with these, giving us uh, some keynotes, you know, to, to help us like do those A and B drawings correctly. So it, it really was a team effort. We had so much fun. <laughs> yeah. That was, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> and thanks, VH. Oh, so, uh, great. Yeah, we'll catch you later. <laughs> yeah. See you. Right, I must say, of course, I, me, but me and Katie, we've been lucky enough to actually see the short movie last fall, and it. I would advise everyone here uh, attending this webinar to watch it because it's lovely, and is it's it's an it's an incredible story. So, thanks for showing us this um, this board and the creative process behind it. Uh, now it's QA time, and to kick it off, I have a question. Um, you were saying before. Um, during your, your presentation that there were some scenes that were cut out because they failed in animation later. So uh, how many times did that happen and how important is, is pre-production to avoid this kind of rework of already developed asset later on in, 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 in post? Yeah, no, that's a, a good point. And uh, it, well, to answer the question simply, it's very expensive whenever we need to... Uh, rework a 3D sequence. So it was really essential for us to, yeah, to get most of the answers with the storyboards with the 2D animatic. And it was the rare exception where we'd get to 3D and go, hmm, we've got to rethink this. Usually, uh, you know, it was a camera challenge, uh, framing or, or, or getting, um, resolving it uh, to, to, to tell some more subtle parts of the story. Uh, I guess, right, Ben, one of the big ones was that the opening sequence of the film where we've got the whole crew and we've got the blast and the smoke traveling through the tunnel. That was one uh, that, uh, yeah, we had to play with a bit in 3D. Yeah, it, it was a difficult, difficult one, but uh, ultimately we ended up going back to the storyboards. Um, yeah. Once we uh, sort of figure out um, the way we wanted to uh, do that uh, sequence. Yeah, it's a good point. We had some back and forth between the boards and and the three D layout uh, for that that particular sequence. But it was uh, it was good. It was uh, iterations that kept improving and and, and finding the eventual solution uh, to it. Uh, but but yeah, getting to to board uh, effectively has really saved us from a lot of those issues. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. I have another question. So obviously you mentioned how the power of Flix is you have everything in one place um, and you can iterate freely. What is the, what would you consider being a big number of revisions for a sequence uh, that you can get from an artist? And is there a particular sequence in Canary that had a lot more revisions in it that you didn't expect? Well, I mean, we, it, it depends on the artist, you know, in, in a way, in terms of the number of versions of a sequence, uh, we had some artists that worked in different ways. Uh, one of them would upload once he was done boarding the whole sequence. So, you know, there would be a version and that's what we put notes on. Uh, but another artist, his, his way to work was to upload uh, panels as he was doing them directly to Flix. And I guess for him, uh, it was great because he got to sort of test out his shot flow as he was going, he'd add panels, this is working out, shuffle, test some timings even to try and really figure out 
how this was going to work. Uh, of course, this created a lot of versions because whenever you change stuff in, in Flex, you get extra versions. Uh, so we did get close to a thousand versions on that one, uh, which can sound scary, but it was always very easy. Uh, we just had to go to his latest version, which is always the one at the top. So that's what we put in our notes. And uh, of course, there was a question, well, is, is, you know, is Flix going to be able to handle <laughs> so many versions? Okay. And thankfully, there were no issues yet. Always uh, kept running and uh, handling that really well. <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear that we helped Kayo and you guys. Um, there are actually quite a few questions in the, in the chat already. There are already yeah. like three questions. Um, there is one from Mario Leone and actually two from Mario. Um, I'm going to put them together, Mario, hope you don't mind. Hope, um, you hope, I hope you don't mind. And he's asking in the creative process of thinking how to improve the storyboard, how do you approach it? Uh, is it inspiration and knowledge or do you use some reference to? And Connected to that, how how can he improve his storytelling abilities based on on your experience? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. You want you, you want to take this one, Ben? Yes, uh, I'll try. <laughs> What's on? Well, uh, I think that uh, owning your storytelling skills is the first thing. Uh, you want to really focus on, I think, like, you know, reading a lot of, a lot of books or watching a lot of movie will definitely help. And um, watching a lot of movie or reading comic books will also help you um, to see different uh, uh, ways of cutting scenes, uh, you know, and choosing uh, um, I, I don't know how to say, say this um, your, your, your scene, you know, your character, where to place your character, do, do some composition work and cut, cut from, from that. And, um, and then uh, with uh, the way we started, we started with the thumbnail. And I always suggest that you never skip that, that step because it allows you to, to, to draw really roughly, you know, on the same page, you know, all these ideas, try to shuffle, try to, to make up your mind before tackling, you know, the actual storyboard. And what I really enjoyed about uh, the software is that this aspect is not left out and so you can draw a lot of thumbnail and then with the you know one snap you have it all uh, within um, flick so that you can shuffle and add to it um, so um, I would suggest that if you don't skip these first steps, you're on the road to success. <laughs> that's nice, but it's that's all the creative process, really, right? That starts from the very beginning. Experimentation of the idea is not even how it looks like; it's just how it flows together. And yeah, it's. It's the most inter interesting part. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so another question is from Andrew Shelby. And Andrew's asking, uh, how long did it take to create the first storyboard iteration and transition to the more detailed version? I guess you could take the sequence that you guys showed um, as an example. Yeah. Well, um, I would say for Kayo to come back to us was about for this sequence about one to two days turnaround. Um, and for us to do the thumbnail, 
uh, it would go much, much quicker because we were tackling uh, the entire story as we were tackling this um, these uh, sequence. Uh, but it took a few months, you know, with back and forth with the editing and seeing how these um, play in the reel to really get to uh, those uh, final storyboards. But as you could see, like uh, by by version, like let's say 74, Kayo had already had, you know, the core drawings that which made that sequence. So after that, it was more iteration and just adding a few uh, storyboards here and there. Overall, I think it took about three to four months to get a solid version of the film. Then there were adjustments um, made for a bit of the production for maybe another two, three months, you know, just, but it was adjustments as a response, responding to like layout and stuff and just, you know, yeah. uh, using story to improve the 3D process. That's really interesting, guys. Thank you. Um, I was actually thinking, as a follow-up question to that, what what's usually uh, the cause for delays in, you know, getting to that final uh, sequence nailed down? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, anyways, it's it's you know, it, it's basic. It's basically the artistic process, right? It's trying to improve. Uh, the film and trying to also project yourself into the future beyond like, okay, this is the storyboard version, but you know, what it, is this going to work out in CG? Because as much as possible, you want to make sure that the next step is going to go well. So that was part of our job too. So if we saw something that we're more like, okay, well, this kind of works at the board, but damn, it's going <laughs> to hit, you know, it might hit a wall later and might make things more complicated for the, the rest of the team, then, you know, we, we'd address that. Yeah. And the contrary is true as well, where uh, you 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 have such faith in what's uh, boarded, and you know that uh, it's gonna read through. But um, for some reason, um, people just don't get it at, at this stage. So um, you you also have to. Uh, fight a little more for for these scenes, which can uh, sometimes lead you to try out uh, other versions and then come back to what you know uh, would have worked in the first place. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's not not a fully linear process <laughs> creating, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Right. I don't see other questions in the chat. Um, so I think if no one else from the audience has another question for you, I might let you free, guys. Okay. <laughs> Well, oh, thank you so one much. question. Oh, sorry, guys. One question just popped up by uh, Carlos Valcarcel. I am sorry if I am butchering your last name. Uh, so you mentioned that you were writing at the same time as boarding. Is this something that happens often? Um, well, I'm well, first. Hi, Carlos, who's actually part of the team that worked on Canary, <laughs> who was uh, heading the rig rigging of the characters. <laughs> nice of you to be here. Oh, uh, man. Okay. Oh, yeah. If we were writing at the same time as boarding. Um, well, I don't know, Carlos, uh, uh, if that's a common thing, but that felt so natural for, for us because, uh, as you know... Um, well, just to explain the steps, well, right? I mean, we had we had a script, then we, we did, you know, pin up beats on a board just written out, just being very flexible with that. And then we have the thumbnails, 
iteration on another thumbnail as Kayo came in and sort of gave us his pitch on how he saw sequences. And then, then we, we got fleshed out boards and then we'd play around with, with those to improve. Um, so yeah, in a way it was constant yeah, it was constant writing in the, in terms of like adjusting the story. It wasn't writing on the page, but it was yeah, sort of um, playing with the story throughout. And and even I mean, that continues at um, at layout and animation as well. You know, it's constantly just happening. Layout, you know, just always communicating as well as it needs to. Is the camera's in the right place? And move is the movement of the camera improving what's being said or not? Um, and at animation, obviously the performance, how, how well is it coming across? Is it too subtle? Is it too over the top for this, um, for the emotion we're trying to convey? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's constantly just making sure the story's coming across as it should. Yeah. And also we were trying to uh, um, sort of emulate what the, the big, bigger studios um, do as well with their their story team you know so um uh, we weren't uh we weren't so we weren't tied to 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 a script which which uh i think m made us like you know draw and iterate um, um more and um I, I think there's an, an advantage to 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 writing that way because um, uh, you understand as well the timing of your sequence that you're 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 writing. So uh, let's say you want to write something that's more economical in time. You're gonna choose like maybe three or four shot to get to that point. Uh, so uh, yeah, it it has some uh, good strength to uh, to 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 do that uh, kind of approach to to writing. It's a visual <laughs> medium, right? So it's not like writing a, a book. Oh, I'm losing my lights. Uh, but <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it, it's good to have a script, but not to be tied to it, you know, to be able to uh, be flexible once you get into storyboards. Also, well, those scripts changes constantly back and forth across the whole production. Like, so it's never the one that you start with. One more question, actually. There is, um, again, from the audience, from Andrew Shelby again. Um, is again, did you have a plan for the process um, for with, with your team or um, would you go with your gut feeling? I think um, probably from a production point of view in terms of organization, mm -hmm. Andrew, feel free to, to, to clarify if I'm if I've misinterpreted your mm -hmm. question. Um, yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna try my best to to answer that. Um, we've uh, we've been doing commercials uh, together for uh, like ten years or so, and been directing together, you know, for for fifteen years. And and I think that that layout or that plan was. Um, what we gained through all these years of working together. So we have a way uh, of working, which is not very different than, um, you know, what our, what's a typical studio uh, does. So, but um, we like to go through each steps uh, that, um, of the process. Um, yeah, we, we, we try and do things well, you know, um, we, so there's always some flexibility to improve uh, as we go, but we always try to avoid as much as we can going back a step, you know, when we're in layout, we don't necessarily want to go back to storyboard, we will if it makes sense, if it's, if it's more economical, and same with animation, we don't want to go back to layout. Uh, we want to keep moving forward. Sometimes there's no choice, and that's where the sort of experience or gut feeling, as you say, comes in. 
to make that call. Uh, but yeah, usually we're always trying to build and, and go forward. Great, great. Thanks, guys. I think that was the last question. Um, Carlos says thank you. Uh, and, <laughs> and yeah, with this, I think we can wrap it up. And thank you very much again for showing us the board and the story, a little bit more details. Um, it was really, it was really lovely to see the boards after having watched the video. Looking forward to the next one. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks for the, uh, the questions. Thank you for the attention. And we hope to see you soon at a demo, at another event. Who knows? See you soon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye.